All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. All right, so let's get into this video. So in this video, I want to talk about, uh, it's a two-part video where I'm going to be talking about Pan-Africanism. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Nana Akofuado, Ghana's current president, and the concern that many people are having right now in terms of the question people are asking, is he really a Pan-African? And so I want to discuss this in length, and I want to give you guys uh, a logical argument to some of the concerns that people are having regarding his stance on Pan-Africanism. The second part of this video will we'll also discuss Ghana as a Pan-African hub. Is Ghana also truly a Pan-African country as it lived up to the ideals of Pan-Africanism? So these are two things that we're going to discuss. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the first one in terms of Nana Akofo-Addo. Nana Akofo-Addo is the current president of Ghana. He was elected in 2016 and began his term in 2017. He, like many of his predecessors, have championed Pan-Africanism. Many have championed the unity of Africa. So he comes from a long line of leaders in Ghana who have championed this. The idea of Pan-Africanism was something that was started in Ghana back as early as 1957. Ghana's first prime minister, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, who also led Ghana to its independence from the British colonial rule in 1957 when they gained their independence was known to be the first father of Pan-Africanism in Ghana. He was a prolific leader who was also respected. He was one who was championing African unity back in the days. Kwame Nkrumah was born in 1909, and throughout his whole existence and his life, he was known for being a champion of uniting Africa. His philosophy was the Nkrumahism, which essentially encompasses three things, socialism, African nationalism, and pan-Africanism. So these are things that he was known for. However, he was also not without controversy. He was seen back then as an authoritarian leader, someone who wanted to exert power for himself, wanted to be king of Africa. But nonetheless, Kwame Nkrumah is widely respected as the father of Pan-Africanism and did a lot for both Ghana as well as Africa. Over the years, um, many other leaders uh, in Ghana have really existed and have sprung up who have championed uh, Pan-African uh, ideologies. Um, so that now brings me to Nana Akofuado, who is today's current leader. So one of the key things that I like about Nana Kofuado, I think that many people also fell in love with him right off the bat when he came into uh, his position in, 19, in 2017 was his stance against Africa being an aid hub for Europeans. He, there were instances of conversations with him as well as either French president uh, Emmanuel Macron where he was seen to really be pushing, to really be pushing back at Emmanuel Macron's uh, aid or, uh, you know, uh, tone of giving Africa aid. He really was against Africa being a place where Europeans will see as aid-dependent type of continent. And so he really gained the hearts of a lot of people with those stands. However, over the years, his actions have shown that he is really, truly not a Pan-African, as many have once thought that he was. A couple of actions that he has taken and a couple of things that he has done over the years have made a lot of people question if, truly, if, he, if he is truly a Pan-African. Nana Kofuado is a charismatic leader, someone who is well-dressed, well-spoken. When you hear him speak, you are more able you know, obliged to really listen to him. He really knows how to connect his point. He really knows how to make his point. And he has really been uh, a leader who has captured the heart of many. However, he has also come across as someone who says the right thing and does the opposite, which a lot of African leaders over the years have been known to do, especially those who have championed Pan-Africanism over the years. 
So he seemed to be toting that same line of saying the right thing, but doing the opposite. Here's Nana Akofu Ado talking about reparations and how her reparations is owed to descendants of enslaved Africans who will be, who will be known today as African-Americans. Take a listen to this. It is time for Africa. Financial reparations are long overdue, Ghana's president said on Tuesday, as compensation for the transatlantic slave trade. Nana Akufo Addo was speaking on the first day of a reparations conference in Accra. No amount of money can restore the damage caused by the transatlantic slave trade and its consequences, which will span many centuries. But surely, this is a matter that the world must confront and can no longer ignore. Okay, so I want to address that really quickly. Because if Nana Kofu Addo was truly interested in paying reparations to the descendants of enslaved Africans, it would start with him. He would put his money where his mouth is and be the first to cut out the check, seeing that Ghana also participated in slavery. But I can guarantee you that he's not going to do that. Because again, this goes with that whole thing that I just talked about where he says the right thing, but does differently. I will tell you that Nana Kofu Addo knows that the reparations conversation is something that is of interest to a lot of African Americans. And he's told in the same line that you've often heard Democrats in the United States do, where every election season, every past Democratic candidate or present Democratic candidate have talked about reparations, but none of them have done anything about it or will do anything about it. It's the same talking point that you hear from a lot of this, who people use that to deceive African Americans or black people and to garner their vote, knowing fully well they have no intentions of doing it. Because the conversation of reparations is a very touchy and very sensitive area for a lot of African Americans in this country. And so Nana Kofu Addo publicly talking about reparations to African Americans, knowing fully well that it will have to start with him, but he will never cut a check for African Americans, because if he wanted to, he would have done it already. Now, also on that line, I want to address this whole idea of that type of language that Africa needs to cut or pay reparations to African Americans. That is a very deceptive and very dangerous language and tone to be putting out there, because 54 countries in Africa did not participate in slavery. 54 countries in Africa also did not, did not condone slavery back in the days. So to now say Africa needs to pay reparation is to now somehow subject other African countries who have nothing, had nothing to do with this to stop paying that kind of reparation. That is a dangerous tone and one that is very divisive and one that he's not going to garner any type of support from. And he knows this. Not to mention also that the, those that participated in slavery were Arab Africans. So if, if reparations need to be paid to descendants of enslaved Africans, you will need to get it from Arab Africans and not echo out this whole thing about Africa needs to pay reparations. So that is one thing that I wanted to make sure that I clarify. Another thing about Nana Kofu Addo in terms of doing one thing, saying one thing and appealing or appearing to be a pan-African and doing a different thing is that Nana Kofu Addo canceled a very highly anticipated pan-African event that was going to be held in Ghana. It was an event that had, you know, heavy hitters who were respected in the African continent, people who were respected for their work, people who have championed unity in Africa, people who are highly, highly respected. It was an event that was going to garner a lot of youth in Ghana, as well as touch and impact a lot of people. Hundreds of thousands of people were looking forward to this, if not millions of people. Dana Kofu Addo canceled this event. For no reason, because he was concerned about one particular candidate in the event who might have been looking for a political agenda in this whole thing. Now, why he thought he needed to cancel something like that for over a concern for one person, that beats me. Not to mention that Nana Kofu Addo's term is over in 2025. So it isn't like he's running up for an election. So to cancel an event because of his concern over one person who he claims was using it as a political pawn to try to gain a political foot entry into Ghana. That beats me.
So that is another a case that people, another, that's another thing that people have seen that have caused people to question, is he truly a Pan-African? Or is he another charismatic leader who says the right thing and does the opposite? In this last uh, argument that I'm going to put forth before you, I want you to take a look at this video clip with Nana Kofuado having a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, where it appears that he was ratting out one or few of his African neighbors, which would be Burkina Faso and Mali, for the decision to partner with the Wagner Group of Russia to try to have some kind of security on the border. Take a listen to Nana Kofuado seemingly trying to report, for lack of a better word, these African countries and his neighboring countries in the Sahel to a Western country. Take a look at this. So, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much. Uh, we'll just thank the American government for the invitation to participate in this summit. I think it's a summit that's been long overdue. I believe it's the second. The last time was, what, over 10 years ago. Yeah, perhaps we should be doing it more. But it's, it's, it's good that it has happened. Um, it gives us an opportunity to talk about many common threats and challenges that we have, which we've identified. And particularly for us, to be able to put into relief where we are. Yesterday I had a, an extremely, I was part of an extremely useful meeting with the people from the Congress to come and talk about security matters. I believe that the, Madam, you were there, you were part of the meeting. And um, it's significance for us. And I think that beyond everything, that is a matter that I want to urge upon you. Today, Russian mercenaries are on our northern border. Burkina Faso has now entered into an arrangement uh, to go along with Mali in employing the Wagner forces there. I believe a mine in southern Burkina has been allocated to them as a form of payment for their services. Prime Minister Burkina Faso in the last 10 days has been in Moscow. And to have them operating on our northern border is particularly distressing for us in Ghana. Apart from not uh, uh, accepting the idea of the great powers once again making Africa the theater of operation, we have a particular position that you know about over the Ukraine war where we have been very, very vocal and upfront about condemning the invasion of Russia, by Russia. And therefore, they're now to have this group at our borders. It's a matter of some considerable disquiet and concern for us. And we really, really like to have a privileged opportunity to talk about its implications and what we believe ought to be the case. This is what uh, took place with the discussion in the Congress yesterday, which I found very fruitful. And I would like uh, to that the themes of that discussion should be the themes that we should continue to address. To what extent we can have you as a partner in confronting these threats. Now, I don't know why he felt that he had to tell Anthony Blinken of the plans of Burkina Faso and Mali in wanting to secure their areas. I don't know why he felt that he needed to tell him that, because I can assure you that Anthony Blinken already knew this. There's nothing you're going to tell him about what's going on in the Sahel in that region. They already know this. They have satellites that are monitoring that whole region. So there's nothing that he's telling him <laughs> that is news. They have satellite, they have drones that, that have been watching this area and they know things before even he knows it. But the point I'm trying to make is this, that you're finding a West African country, a president from a West African country, Ghana, going to report a, or snatch or rat his own neighboring countries who are part of the organization that he belongs to, ECOWAS, to a foreign country like the United States. Why? To me, that I will never know. And that goes against Pan-Africanism because if you are going to come off as a Pan-African leader, that is an action that is not Pan-African. 
That is an action that is anti-Africa because Mali and Burkina Faso are sovereign nations. They have the right to protect their countries. They have the right to partner with whoever they want to partner with. They have the right to do business with anyone. So if they choose to go with Russia for security, it is their choice and it is their right to do. To not have a sitting president of Ghana go to the West to now seem to report this action, to me, goes against Pan-Africanism. And I mentioned early on that we loved Nana Kofu Addo for his stance against European invasion and European interest in Africa. What I failed to mention was that while he's opposed to Europe, he's a puppet to the West. Many times when you hear Nana Kofu Addo address either Europe or the West, you never see him have any smoke against the West. It's always smoke against Europe because he is in bed with the West, which is why in this clip I just showed you, you see him really toting or aligning with such a force. Now, the United States is allies to a lot of countries. The United States is uh, uh, a friend to a lot of African countries. And I'm not opposed to that. What I am standing against is a man who seemed to champion Pan-Africanism, a man who seemed to say Africa unite and talks a good talk. However, he also opposes the moves of his own neighboring countries or West African countries or his region because he doesn't agree with their move. And so to me, that doesn't spell Pan-Africanism. That spells betrayal of Africa. And that's why I wanted to have this video because we're seeing more and more of these types of leaders who say the right things, who use Bud's words that seem to suggest that they are for Africa, with Africa, only to do the wrong thing. Africa is plagued with these types of charismatic, prolific leaders. And it's about time that we begin calling them out in real time as we are seeing these things happen. So I don't believe that Nana Kofuado is a pan-African leader. I think he's a leader who is very charismatic, who knows to say the right things and knows the Bud's words and key words to kind of tap into. But does, his actions have shown that he does the opposite. Things that are not also in the best intention for his own country. There are calls, growing calls to have him resign. There are calls that have been growing ever since he got into his presidency. He has led the country astray. Under his presidency, the country had an inflation of up to 40% inflation. The country has really been devastated with a lot of bad situation. He's had to go to the IMF. The same person who has been talking about Africa should not be giving aid has gone to IMF to get aid. So again, so I want you to watch what people do and not only necessarily what they say, because people can say all the right things and do the opposite, which is something that unfortunately African leaders have been known to do over the years. Anyway, thank you all for watching this. I do have a second part of this where we're going to talk about is Ghana living up to its Pan-African ideals? I want you to click here to watch that video. But until then, please make sure you subscribe, like the video, share the content, and I'll see you all next time.